our introduction to exercise 3a on substitution of values into a formula on page 115 of your textbook. Like I mentioned before, super simple topic, all we're doing is substituting, so replacing values or numbers uh, with the pronumerals given to us in the question. Just in case you're not familiar, pronumerals, remember, means the letters that represent a variable. This topic, in, in terms of the whole chapter, on linear relations and equations, uh, it's pretty much an extension of what we already know. So graphing linear equations or forming linear equations based on a word or problem, that kind of thing. So that's what we're going to be focusing on throughout this topic. Uh, in this situation, this exercise, we're going to start off with a more basic understanding of substituting the values into just a provided formula. And sometimes it might require transposing or rearranging of an equation in order to get your answer. So if I was to write it down in by definition, a formula is a mathematical relationship connecting two or more variables. Now, a formula you guys are generally familiar with. For example, the formula for the area of a circle. Right? Basically, what we're doing is we're saying it's a mathematical relationship between one variable and another variable or more. or more. So by substituting the variables that we know, we can find the value of an unknown variable. That makes sense. If I'm substituting, for example, the radius of a circle, then I can find the area of the circle based off the formula. Let's put that into practice. So, the cost of hiring a windsurfer is given by the rule C equals to 40T plus 10, where C is the cost in dollars and T is the time in hours. How much would it cost to hire a windsurfer for two hours? Now, before I actually answer the question, I'm going to try and interpret what that formula tells me. So C equals to 40 times T plus 10. Now, what that tells me is that even when time is zero hours, it's still going to cost $10. Because that's the flat rate. doesn't matter how many hours you hire it for, it's going to cost $10. And on top of that, we can see because it's 40 times T, I know it's $40 times by T. In other words, it's $40 for every hour. So 40 an hour, an hour plus the 10 hiring fee, let's say. So how much would it cost to hire Windsor for two hours? Of course, we just substitute. I'm going to write let T equals to 2. Now, the reason I'm writing that is so that I'm making very clear to the assessor, I, hey, I know t equals to 2, just letting you know, just in case I make some error down the road, I'm telling you that I know t equals to 2. So I can write c equals to 40 times 2 plus 10. Now, here's my question. What's the problem with me writing it like this? So 40, and because it's t, I'm going to replace t with 2, and then plus 10. What's wrong with that? Yeah. Good. 402. Of course, that's not what we're looking for. What do I have to add in between to make it not 402? Times. Or, what I prefer to do is this. I prefer to put brackets. Now, it's not wrong for you to put brackets or multiplication, whatever it is. But I like to put the brackets to make it super clear that we're multiplying. And the reason I do that is because I can substitute the number. And if it's a negative number, we don't get confused. Right, multiply by negative, and sometimes if you just write so many operations, it gets really confusing. So I like to write the brackets in there. 40 bracket 2, just so it's super clear. Which I know 40 times 2 is 80. We still have to plus the 10. Oops. Plus the 10, which gives us an answer of 90. Am I done? C, C equals to 90. Yeah, what else? I'm missing one more step. What's the question say? It says, how much will it cost? 90. 90 what? Dollars. dollars thank you very much. <clears throat> if the question said, how many dollars? And you said 90. Great, you've answered the question. It's going to be $90. But if it says, how much it costs? 90 isn't a justifiable unit. Sweet. The perimeter of the shape shown can be given by the formula where P equals 2L plus H bracket 1 plus pi over 2. Super confusing stuff. So, we're just going to use the formula, substitute our values in, to determine the value of, let's say, P. In this formula, L is the length of the rectangle, H is the height. Find the perimeter, correct to one decimal place, if L equals to 16.1 and H equals to 3.2. Now, the first thing I would do in this situation is just to make sure the units are the same. Because if the units are different, one's in millimeters, one's in centimeters, it's going to get very confusing very quickly. In this case, they're both the same. Great, let's just substitute the values in. So I'm going to rewrite this formula. 
replacing these numbers in. So P equals to 2, and instead of running L, I'm going to run at 16.1. Once again, you can multiply if you want. I'm just going to put brackets there. Plus H, which is 3.2, times by 1 plus pi over 2. Any questions about that? Okay. What did I do from here? Put it in the calculator. Thank you very much. We put in the calculator. No point having to do this one by hand, right? So let's put in the calculator and we should end up with something in decimal places. I know that because we've got pi in there somewhere, which we know is an irrational number. So let's clear this calculator out first. And we go 2 times, and you can just put the brackets in like you would write it out. 2 times 16.1 plus 3.2 times 1 plus pi, which we need to get the calculator out, uh, the keyboard out, sorry, for. Which gives us an answer of 40.4265, blah, 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 blah. Remember, it has to be one decimal place. I'm going to write P is approximately 40.4. Are we happy with that? There's a reason I'm pausing so long. What am I missing? Thank you very much. Units, centimeters. That's it. Especially if the units given to you were a different format. So, for example, a meter and a centimeter unit, we have to specify which unit we're working for for the answer. Seems like pretty straightforward stuff. Awesome. Uh